Hello, I'm Osman Ceylan. I am a senior applications engineer at Mauro Microwave. Measurement reliability is an important requirement to have accurate and useful measurement data for microwave engineers. In this presentation, I will talk about oscillations. This is the first presentation of our measurement reliability series. Oscillation in electrical circuits and systems is a wide topic. In this presentation, I will focus on measurement setup related oscillations and talk about some simple but effective methods to prevent oscillations caused by measurement setup issues. I will start my presentation by explaining the main source of an oscillation shortly. After that, I will show some examples as oscillation sources from transistor level to complete system. It will be followed by a slide explaining how to understand an oscillation during a measurement session. I will finalize the presentation with some recommendations to improve stability of your measurement setup. Amplification is a key requirement for microwave engineers. If a system hasn't got a feedback between its input and output ports, the output signal is a function of the amplifier and it doesn't affect the signal at the input. A system like this has no output if there is no signal at its input. However, if there is a feedback loop in the system, which means that some portion of the output signal goes into the input, a critical condition appears. Now, the output signal is a function of the gain of the amplifier A and the gain of the feedback structure B. The circuit function clearly shows that if A times B is equal to 1, the system has an undefined output. It's also independent than the input signal, so it's an oscillation. Therefore, if there is a feedback in a system, there is a possibility of oscillation. If there is oscillation, it's not possible to control the system properly. Obviously, we engineers never want a situation like this. I will show some feedbacks in, in a transistor, packed device, implemented circuit and system in the following slides. Transistors are the essential components of RF systems. Here we see a Bayer-Dye transistor. This is a simplified model of gun hand. One of the most important feedback sources in a Bayer-Dye transistor is the capacitance between the drain and gate. Although its value is relatively small, it has a strong feedback effect. It's an inevitable feedback component caused by the physical structure of the transistor. One upper level from the Bayer Dye transistor is package devices. Especially large RF transistors are used within a package. Therefore, some bonding wires are needed to make a connection between the transistor's pads and package leads. Since the transistor's width is small, there might be some coupling between the bonding wires at the gate and drain. This is one of the obvious feedback sources in a package device. Another one is the resistance between the source and ground plane. The Bayer Dye transistor is attached to the bottom of the package with some solder or conductive glue. However, these chemicals cannot provide a perfect conductance and some resistance occurs between the transistor source plane and package surface. In addition, if the package is very small, there might be some coupling between the package leads. There are also feedback loops at the circuit level. The most common ones are coupling between the biasing networks and matching networks. Poorly designed metal enclosures can also cause feedback loops due to the in-package radiations. A large signal measurement setup is the system example that I explain some feedback sources. The most common feedback source in a measurement setup is non or poorly isolated power supplies and test signal leakage of coaxial cables, especially for high power measurement setups. There are a few simple and effective actions you can apply immediately. First, tidy up your setup. Second, use high isolation test and measurement grade coaxial cables and interconnections. Third, Isolated power supplies, shielded and short cables for biasing. Fourth, wideband and resonant free passive components.
How do you understand if your duty is oscillating during a measurement? There are different ways to understand your duty is oscillating. I categorize them, easy ones and difficult ones to observe. The easiest one is to keep looking at the biasing process of the duty. If the drain or collector current rises rapidly without your gate or base control, it means that the duty starts oscillation during the biasing. Usually, it's not possible to sense it in time and too much current starts flowing that it's supposed to be. It might also be dangerous for your duty and your measurement setup. It can damage the measurement equipment. Therefore, it's essential to use overcurrent protection of the power supplies properly. The second one is an irregular current trend during a frequency or power sweep in a measurement. For example, here we see a peak around 7 dBm input power. It's a sign of an oscillation and needs to be verified. The third one is for active source pool or load pool measurements. If the system doesn't converge properly and the state of the measurement changes rapidly, it's an important indicator of an oscillation in that load and source impedance value. There are also some oscillations which are difficult to understand. For example, if there is an oscillation at a lot higher frequency than your measurement range, its effect might be small on the current or output power variation. Still, it causes performance degradation or noise on the measurement data. Since it's out of your measurement setup sensing range, before blaming your calibration or probes landing, it's good to check all spectrum. Therefore, we recommend having a wideband spectrum analyzer in your measurement lab. Rarely, some special condi conditions can also cause oscillations such as a specific input power value during a power sweep or an active load pool case for a particular harmonic load tuning. If your duty is oscillating and you know the oscillation frequency, we have some recommendations that may fix your problem. The first one is the oscillations at your measurement frequency. In this case, you might be performing source pool or load pool in the unstable region of your duty. NS parameter measurement before the load pool measurements can be used to understand unstable regions. Then you can exclude these impedance values from your impedance sweep. The second case is low frequency oscillations, which means up to a few hundred megahertz. These oscillations are usually caused by the biasing networks. I will present more details in my next presentation about this issue. As a fast solution, you can check your biasing networks, change bias T's, and use additional resistors and capacitors on the biasing lines. Don't forget that you cannot use additional components on the biasing line if you perform pulse DC measurements. The third one is spurious oscillations. If you see many signals on the spectrum analyzer's monitor, it's a spurious oscillation. To solve it, you can try to avoid resonances in a wide frequency range using wideband passive equipment such as bias T's, couplers, circulators. If the duty is being measured in low power, a small value wideband attenuator at the source can also be used to provide a resonance free termination at the input. Let's wrap it up and finish the presentation. Oscillations during the device characterization measurements are annoying and we hate them. If your device isn't desperately unstable, some small tricks can save your day. First, it's essential to have a tidy, organized and planned measurement setup. Second, a short inspection with your DUT before the actual large signal measurements can save lots of time and prevent equipment damage. Third, if there's an oscillation, it's important, uh, it's important to understand its frequency to debug the problem. And fourth, use overcurrent and overvoltage protections of your power supplies properly. Set the stop conditions of your measurements, such as maximum current, compression, and maximum power. Thanks for your attention. I wish you oscillation-free measurements. In the next slide, you will see some sources if you want to learn more. Bye.